All right. Hi, my name is Chris Ciccinelli and welcome to HIT. That's HIT High Intensity Growth uh, Tactics. Super excited today. We are going to be talking everything about why do people give up before they get going in business? And I cannot wait today because we're going to have a lot of topics we want to cover. Why are people, you know, giving up before they get going? What What's the reason that they're throwing in the towel too quickly? Today, I have Brian Parsley on with me. Brian, how excited are you? I know you get to go around the world and talk to different business owners, bis- different business people. And this is a subject that you hear a lot about people giving up before they're getting going. Absolutely. You know, you know, it's funny. Um, I was doing some uh, research the other day, and this gentleman's name came up. His name was uh, Ronald Wayne, and I wasn't really familiar with the name, but apparently this guy was famous. And you know what he was famous for, Chris? What was he famous for? He actually was the third founder of Apple Computer with Steve Wozniak and Steve Jobs. But 12 days into the relationship, he said, these kids are idiots. This is never going to work. Uh, I, I don't like the way that they do business. And I'm going to sell them my 10% stake in Apple. Are you ready? $800. <laughs> are you $800 for 10% Apple? I mean, didn't Apple just hit $1 trillion? Last year, they hit a market cap of that. So that would be, uh, let's call it a hundred billion dollars <laughs> oh my goodness i mean well i mean the reasons that people give up i mean like oh i don't i don't think it's gonna be i don't think it's gonna work i don't trust into these kids i mean that's a, a that's absolutely amazing but you don't just see that with apple you see that with so many other people in business yeah well we see it in you that actually not you but i mean our listeners yeah. and, well in me and you that we have these great intentions and willingness i'm going to get fit and i'm going to join the gym and i'm going to start meditating every day for 30 minutes and 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 it's if it's not our willingness and it's not our desire then what is it why are people giving up too early you know, I, as I talk to business owners, that's that's the biggest thing that I, I really it, it concerns me because I see so many kids that are uh, going to college right now and they want to be an entrepreneur. They want to they want to go out there. They look at being an entrepreneur as being this whole like flashy thing. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna have a big house. I'm gonna have a great car. And uh, it's interesting when I talk to them, like, hey, how do how do I do that? And and the and the biggest thing that I I say is it's it's really it's going to be about your mindset that you go in with this whole owning and operating your business. Because the biggest issue that I see is that people want to throw in the towel before that they've seen progress and they want to they want to give up because they 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 feel like they're on this proverbial treadmill. We all want to be the kind of the why guy or the why girl, right? Like we always like that. It's great to come up with an idea. It's great to, you know, look at it and say, man, this would be awesome. I mean, I can't wait to have the new um, you know, SIE yogurt stand. I'm gonna I'm gonna go out there and kick butt, but nobody wants to go out and make the SIE. Nobody wants to go out and make the yogurt. And sure there's Nobody wants to do the retail hours that you need to do to see these things to come into fruition. And that's what I'm seeing right now is the ideas that are throwing out are awesome. It's the execution. It's the not giving up when it's getting too hard. And they're not learning from some of the failures that come with owning, operating a business and being your own entrepreneur. You know, if you're a parent, you, you, know, you, you, you constantly are dealing with, can you imagine, think about this, Chris, um, when, uh, when Max was learning how to walk and he gets up, he falls down, he gets up, he falls down. After about eight or 10 times, you look at your wife and you say, he ain't going to get it. <laughs> Let's just leave him here. <laughs> you would never do that. And what happens is barring any physical delays or challenges, the reason why most of us are walking is because our parents did not give up. Mm-hmm. They, they saw the end goal in mind, which was, well, there's not an option. You got to figure it out. Or this is too difficult to read. Okay, yeah, it's difficult, but you push through and you do it. And failure isn't an option. Otherwise, we'd not we'd all be crawling. And, and to me, that's one of the most important things is, is this mindset that people have to get to that says, is it failure or am I just quitting? Because there's a difference. And, and quite honestly, you quit because of fear of judgment, fear of judgment of others, as well as feeling like you're a fraud for yourself. Mm-hmm. I think fear of judgment is and is crazy because most of the judgment that we're dealing with is we're dealing with these impressions or judgments that people put on to us when we were kids, right? Like, you know, uh, we're not good enough, you know, reader. We might not be good enough in math. Oh, we give it a grade of a C, so we're just average. These labels have carried with us for so 
long that we start now being the story we tell ourselves. Mm-hmm. And when I'm coaching and I'm working with business owners, the first thing I always say is when they when they can't break through, they're not getting ahead, uh, they feel like they're now on that proverbial treadmill, I have to stop them and say, who would you be if you didn't have the story you tell yourself? And the question they're always like, what do you mean? I'm like, look, you've told yourself that you can't do something. You've told yourself that you, you're you not good at doing something. You've went to InstaLie or Facebook and you've started comparing yourself to other people. And it's crazy that the stories that people have imprinted on themselves that they cannot get ahead is keeping them exactly where they are today. And that's why I'm seeing a lot of people not making progress. And when you say mindset, Brian, you're absolutely 100% correct correct on why people aren't getting ahead. Why did they quit so early? Well, I think number one, people need an accountability partner. Um, someone that's not going <laughs> to lie to them. Someone that's uh, going to be, hold them true to themselves. And, 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 and also not only, not only accept that feedback graciously, but being able to say, I want, not only do I want you to, you have an obligation that if my compass is not north and it's straying, I may not see it. And that, you know, if you think about that, even with navigation, with, with boats, there, you can't look at, or driving, it's yeah. even a better one. You can't look at the end of the hood and drive the car. You have to look down the road 50 yards, 100 yards if you want to be safe. Yeah. So we look at our own goals as failure because we didn't achieve something in 90 days, you know, 160 days. Uh, well, I was thinking six months, but that's 180 days. Yeah. Math wasn't my strong suit. I can tell. <laughs> but, but that's okay. But my thing is, is do that. And here's the other two things. Number one, be willing to ask for help. And uh, I love being transparent. Not everybody gets it. Maybe people see it as a weakness, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask for help because I don't want to make any assumptions. And then number two, humility. And, 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 you know, we think of humility around success. Humility is also around failures and being able to accept those, learn from those, whether it's personal or professional, because ultimately if you're not humble and it's like, wow, it was everybody else's fault. It was stupid. They did this. Uh, well, it's not. And, and I think that that's a part of where a lot of people drop the ball. Yeah, I see, I see a lot of people that really, um, you know, start blaming other people, other issues, other things for the reason they're not where they're at. But the issue is really, I got to take responsibility for myself every day. Yeah, every business owner that I coach that is working and, and doing stuff that is outside the norm are the people that are sitting there saying, hey, listen, I've got to I've got to have this mindset going in today saying, hey, it's going to be a good day. I'm going to learn from my mistakes or learn from my failures, but they're not going to define me as the person that I am. Now, the other thing, too, that I see a lot uh, of, of people throwing in the towel before they get going in business, in their new venture, in whatever it might be. I mean, I've talked to guys that are starting lawn care companies. I've start, you know, starting um, – uh, I've got a, a buddy of mine that's starting a gravel company where he's, you know, delivering gravel and rocks. And he's like, man, Chris, it is so hard right now. And, you know, I see my buddy that he, you know, he started the same business three years ago in Alabama, and he's, he's doing really, really well with it. And I'm like, okay, so what do you, what, how do you know he's doing? Well, man, he's got this new uh, Ford 250 dually. He's got, you know, I just saw he just bought a brand new boat. I said, so basically you're going and looking at his life on Instagram and, and Facebook, and you're judging that your business isn't where it should be because of the things you've bought. He's bought. You don't know what he's got. Did he win the little lottery down in Alabama? I mean, I see people that sit back and they are so focused on the outcome of, oh my gosh, I, I'm going to have all these great things. Uh, I'm, I, if I, I own and operate my own business. But what I, what we don't know is, yes, he might have started a business, but is this guy working his business 24 hours a day? But what we're seeing on his Instagram page is he's, you know, buying these nice things. Is he committing to going out there and, and meeting as many new clients as he possibly can? Too many people make these dream boards of what they want. But what I tell people all the time, it's the process is going to get them the outcome. The process of the phone calls, the emails, the text messages. How hungry are you? We eat what we kill, basically, man. If we're 100% sales force, 100% commission base, that's what we have to understand. Don't get so caught up in the new shiny stuff and what everybody else is driving, what everybody else is wearing. Get caught up in the actual process of the phone calls, the networking, doing the things like that. That's why people give up so quickly is because they start looking at all these shiny things and go, I'm not getting that boat fast enough. I'm not getting that car fast enough. What you should be thinking is, this is not a 
sprint. It's a marathon. Take your freaking time. Put the put the actions, put the put your mind in the most important pieces, which is the processes. And I know you're a big process guy and, and you believe in those wholeheartedly. I think I think processes are rituals. You know, I, I do things it, even for me, it's a little bit crazy, but I eat at the same restaurant with the same food because I like that sense of, uh, I don't know, it's familiar. Yeah. Um, but I think the same thing's true in business. And one of the things that you just said that, that really stuck out is is people take a snapshot. And it's very easy to go on any type of social media and, and take a look at someone's photos. Well, look at these influencers now that are coming out. They're saying we're going on fake holidays and not really – wasn't really their car, but, but yet people were believing it and, 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 and following with blind faith. And, and I think that if we take that same uh, concept with uh, uh, a snapshot into your life, it's a snapshot. So what if this was a crap year? So what if it's not going as fast as you? It's a snapshot into 80 years of your life. I'm tired of hearing people moan and complain and, and blame everybody else. My, my dad, guess what? My dad never hugged me or told me he loved me. Well, oh, well, I guess that's a good reason for me not to succeed. I think that we have to at some point take accountability for ourselves and say, what does I really want? Now, we keep talking around success. I think you got to define what that is. Maybe success is progressing towards a worthy ideal. It's not about the car, the house, the boat, or whatever that crap is. But maybe it's really also about something about being respected by my family or or because, you know, as and I know this is gender role, which is not necessarily a, a, a good thing to have for anybody, but I grew up under this pressure that the man's job is to, and this is why with my daughter, I'm trying to teach her that you don't need a man, you you have you. But but for me anyway, I grew up with that pressure, the man's supposed to work, the man's supposed to provide, and we have all this extra stress that's thrown on us, and yet we also are taught you don't talk about your feelings, you don't show you're vulnerable. And those, to me, are the recipe for failure long term. I'm so glad you work now for uh, Pure Romance and doing yeah. that because it's a, it's a world of non-genders, baby, because I think everybody, yeah. yeah, that's what we talk about. That's why when I said I was the pink collar you know, CEO is really because it's it's about you know everybody. It doesn't matter what gender you are. You could be the, they, them, and there. You could be you know, gender non-conforming. You could be you know, uh, whatever because it doesn't matter what it is. It's it, it's who you are as a person and what is your values, what's your work ethic, uh, what is it that the time and energy that you're going to put onto something to be be successful. And you're right, Brian, I agree with you. Uh, first and foremost, one of the things that we talked about on the podcast before is you got to get clear on what success looks like. I 100% agree when you sit down, and that's where I say define for you and your family what it is that you you want, um, and that helps you with getting more clear on the actions, the times. Because sometimes I sit back and I say, man, you know, if you want to make a million dollars, but they might just only want to make. Fifty thousand dollars, and then you know the level of effort that they're going to have to put in is going to be a little bit different than the person that wants to go out and make a million dollars. That person that wants to make a million, I'm going to tell them it's full throttle. It's a hit, high intensity, baby, all the time. But if you can make one dollar, you can make a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, it's just a multiplication of effort, and that was my whole point about you. You, you said it: binary, non-binary, gay, straight, male, <coughs> female, young, old. That stuff doesn't mean anything anymore other than unless you want to put a limitation on yourself. I can't do it because I'm 50. I can't do it because I'm just getting started, oh, whatever it is. Yeah. And, and so what I'm saying is, is that we become our own worst enemy in setting limitations because of what we believe we are supposed to be because we've been taught that our whole life. Yeah. You know, another thing I, uh, I talk about why people get give up before they get going right in business is I see too many people get too distracted. They they are coming up with multiple ideas. They're chasing, you know, so many different uh, avenues when it comes down to business. And, and that's the other thing, not just getting clear on what they want from a financial, but getting clear on their business plan. Um, you know, not trying to chase so many things because they're putting so many different, uh, uh, spending so many different plates, you know, putting so many different post notes on the board of different revenue streams different ways they can make money. And I think uh, people in today's world are creating a very high level of AD, 
HD. I mean, they are literally kind of bouncing all over the walls. And I think that when I've seen business owners, you know, trying to wheel them in so they're not distracted because I say, what's your goal? And they're like, well, I want to go out there and I want to book more parties. I I, I want to go out there and recruit more people. Um, I want to go out there and and, and have a, a, a $1 million team. But I also want to take all these retreats and I'm going to do this personal uh, self-help camp and I'm going to go do this. And I'm, gonna, I'm like, whoa, whoa, slow down. Let's come up with a couple things that we're going we're gonna to initiate and we're going to stick to this year because I don't want you to get too distracted because I don't know what your end game is, and I don't think you do either. Therefore, you're never going to get it. Well, let me bring one more point to that. I also want everyone to know it's okay to not know the end end game. It's okay to have a moving target. In ter- so that's why I always recommend go for – the, the short-term goals. So, you know, instead of saying, I'm going to be totally debt-free, you know, Brad Nelson talks a lot about that, which is exciting, but it could also be overwhelming. We watched a lady in one of the cities, actually, we were in who, who was overwhelmed by how much debt she has. But what if you just said, I'm going to pay off this one card? This is, now you're getting momentum. So you don't get better in a day. You get better day by day. And, that, and, and you have to have small wins and small victories to keep your head in the game. Don't always just focus on binary win or loss, but small victories. And and that's that's what keeps me going. You know, I, I agree with you, uh, especially like right now we're, we're doing partners in business. We've been on the road. Um, the, it is the small wins. It's, it, it's, it's making sure like today when they listen to the podcast, it's like you're not going to go change overnight. It's not, this is not going to listen, you know, to change somebody overnight. This is a, this is a process. If you want to have a better relationship with your significant other, you have more date nights, you have more open, you know, communication. If you want to have better finances, then you have discussions around finances. It's not an argument. It's a discussion. We're together in that. And I, and I see that a lot. But I also probably see couples having that and they're like, well, it's because you always, <laughs> and that's where, you know, as opposed to uh, looking at it, say, what, what are our goals together? And, and the past doesn't equal the future. And you know what? Maybe you made some choices you would change. I certainly have, but let's talk about going forward what we need to do. All right. So let's help these entrepreneurs that are, you know, kind of giving up before they get going. And I think let's get the real deal here, right? Let's kind of let's shake it up a little bit and say, okay, we know that the people do give up. So let's let's go to the positive side here. So we got to let them know, expect struggles, right? It's all right. It's going to be there. It's normal. Don't worry about it. It's part of being that entrepreneur. It's part of owning that business. It's struggle. The struggle is real, isn't it? Well, if, if you know it's there, it's not a surprise. It's when you pretend it, whatever that I'm not going to have an issue and it sneaks up on you is the problem. Uh, yeah. And I think that I like the fact that knowing each and every day that it's going to be a challenge. I, I love the, I, I was an athlete, so I like that competition. I like that kind of every day waking up and, and competing because it's okay to, to have a little bit of struggle, have that, that competition factor. It does motivate me. The other thing too, that I think people need to do if they're sitting out there and saying, Hey, I'm not going to be that person that's going to give up. You need to surround yourself with like-minded people. Like you're listening to this podcast. We all are in that same thing. We all are CEOs. We're all entrepreneurs at some level level. So connecting with each other and, and, and helping each other grow is, is uberly important. You know, it's interesting when I take a look back and we'll just use the financial side. I, I noticed that the folks I was hanging out with when I was broke, they were broke. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and I said, uh, and somebody said, maybe don't get rid of your friends, but maybe you should like grow your circle of influence. And I go, where the rich folk hang out. But, <laughs> but I have noticed that, you know, successful people hang out with successful people, people with bad attitudes, obviously. You know, I mean, that's the only people listening to your, to your negativity or other people that are wanting to drown in their sorrows. And, and I don't want to be around that. No. And the thing I think too, people that, you know, another, another piece is evaluate the things you're listening to, the things that you're reading, evaluate the, the equipment, right? You're the asset as a business owner. And I think, you know, we talk about this, you know, broke people listen to radio, broke people watch TV. I mean, people that are listening to this podcast and their car and driving right now, they're evaluating, they've already evaluated that it says, Hey, listen, I got to start putting good stuff into my, into my sphere, into my world today, because, you know, that's going to help me with that challenge because I know I'm not a person that wants to give up. I'm going to continue to keep moving forward. I'm not going to surround myself with, you know, the people that are kind of the naysayers and negativities, those folks. 
I'm going to evaluate each and every day that I'm not going to I'm not going to watch TV because Orange is New Black ain't paying my bills. I'm not going to sit back and watch listen to the radio because you know I, I want to better myself, better my family, and this is the way I'm going to do it. I know you're not saying if you watch TV you're a loser, but but I can tell you why people do because I I was very. You, do you of watch this. a lot of TV? I I don't watch a lot, but I do watch certain things. Well, you, did you get offended when I said that? Because I mean, like I mean, it's very offensive. <laughs> I watch Blacklist. I love Raymond Reddington. But my point is finding out the why. You know why people watch hours and hours and hours of TV? Because it's an escape. It's an escape from reality. It's an escape from the pressures of having to deal with the things that we deal with. It's no different than drinking and other things. And so my suggestion would be if you love a particular show, you know, watch it. Yeah. But 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 again, you're listening to this, hopefully in your car or doing something as opposed to something that's non productive. That's the difference. And and I think if you can just find that balance between fun and, and building yourself. You know, and I, and Brian, I think I think you said it the why. Why people do the things they why? do, right? Why? Okay, and that and that's getting back to the whole thing. You hear that in almost every business. I we talk about it a lot at Pure Romance. It's like reconnecting with your why. So Every day I reconnect with why I do this because when I wake up, I'm like, woo, today's going to be a great day, right? Why am I doing this? Why do I spend 200 days of the year on the road? Why do you – and that's when if you don't want to be that, that, that person that gives up before you get going, you're going to have to reconnect that with that on a daily basis. And that's going to be the one of the big areas that I tell entrepreneurs, don't forget to remind yourself every day that I'm doing this because I want a better life for my family. I want a better life for myself. I treat success as a family member you know there's there's LC there's Max there's Macy and there's success that's how we operate inside of my household every day and I think a lot of people need to reconnect with that and today when you're in your car and you're listening to this or you're sitting at your office right now go ahead and, and, and make some time to reaffirm why it is that you do what you do make sure that 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 stays first and foremost every day because it is going to be that kind of that fuel to keep you going uh, when things get hard because you know the storm is coming it comes every Every day, you've got to weather it. And what you have to understand is that you're you are the anchor man. You're the person that's going to hold yourself in a, in a situation. You're going to weather the bad times. You're going to make sure that you shine on the good times. And together, you know, we we've got to make sure that we surround ourselves with the most positive people, the most positive resources from the things we listen to, the things we watch. Um, and I think that that's huge. I would agree. I don't even know how I can add something on that. I don't think you can, Brian. No. <laughs> but would you like to? I, no, I mean, I, I, I think, I think that uh, when we get down to it, selfish, uh, when we're selfish, um, self-centeredness, that, that is the, we think that's the root of our troubles. But, but our troubles come from fears. Every challenge that we have is coming from some type of fear, of doubt, or uncertainty, right? And um, I, I, that's, why, that's why I share we behave ourselves, including me. We behave ourselves into the situations we're in, good or bad. So if you don't look what you have and you don't like it, if you look at it, then just say, what have I done to get to that point? And, 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 and sometimes you'll never be able to go back and change or fix, but you just learn from it and push forward and move forward. And, and I think when we get to that point, it's not about not caring because I, I care deeply, uh, but the, I'm not centered around my success and failure based on someone else liking me or wanting me you know, then, then it goes easier. Well, Brian Parsley, I like you. And I want to tell you, thanks so much for, you know, taking part in this uh, broadcast of hit. This is how not to give up before you get going, right? How to commit to the process, detach for the outcome. I appreciate everybody listening. Remember, you're living life by design, not by default. Thanks so much for tuning in to hit high intensity growth. We'll see you next time.